we'll begin with a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray a prayer to our mother of life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. The title of this talk is Spiritual Warfare and the Protection of Life. The original sin of man, the root sin, is told to us in the book of Genesis. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God said, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. And then, only a few verses later, the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God say, you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Spiritual warfare is a paradox. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. The word that converts the world is the word that sanctifies a disciple. And the word is a sword. And if at any point the word is no longer welcomed to do its work, the disciple falls away and even becomes an enemy of God. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. On that occasion, John records, the Jews began to object. We are not slaves, we are children of Abraham. And by the end of the conversation, they were taking up stones 
to stone Jesus. Jesus' spiritual warfare is for our conversion, which becomes the way of our sanctification. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So, being a disciple is spiritual warfare the whole way, and the whole way a growing faith and love and peace. The sonship of God, the daughterhood of God, cannot be separated from the spiritual warfare of a child of God. Neither for him in his life, the life of Jesus on this earth, nor for us in our lives. We cannot uh, avoid uh, this war. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. He who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name inscribed which no one knows but himself. He is clad in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, followed him on white horses. From his mouth issues a sharp sword with which to smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There is a wonderful passage in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians on what this spiritual warfare asks of us and gives to us. And I'll read that passage. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not, com we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench 
all the flaming darks, darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit. So, we must know our enemy. There is a wonderful passage in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians on what this spiritual warfare demands and what it gives. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that utterance may be given me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly. So the, the, um, the, the three when he says um, the hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, um, because the, the three places uh, in the whole universe, uh, apart from hell, the three places are God himself, and then this place of the angels, uh, that's the second heavenly place, where, where they look upon Almighty God, they, they adore the Most Holy Trinity, as well as being sent down to earth and uh, doing, doing work in that way. Uh, so I suppose there are contemplative angels and there are uh, working angels. Um, and then the th the the uh, the the, the, the f um, first heaven is our ordinary sky, what we call the heavens. Um, so w when um, the fall of man, uh, um, well, the first of all, the fall of the angels is when the angels fell from the second heaven. Uh, where they can gaze on God and from which they are sent to do work on earth and so on, they fell from that place. Uh, a third of the angels fell, we're told in the book of the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. And um, uh, we, we are called higher than the angels. We are called um, in Christ to be where Christ is, which is the third heaven, the, the presence of God himself, what Jesus promises. 
and we're not just gazing upon God. It's sometimes called the beatific vision, but it really, uh, which is a very honored uh, description, which we must take seriously and re great respect. But it, it is more than vision. That's what the angels have in the second heaven. But the call of human beings in Christ is to be in the third heaven, I in you and you in me, all that Jesus teaches at the Last Supper, uh, as described in John's Gospel. Um, this is where man is called, because God became man, then man shares in the actual life of the Trinity above the angels. Now there's a poem uh, by a great friend, another priest, Father Michael Sellers, um, called Soldier of Christ. And uh, I'll read on this, um, you know, it, it, it's wonderfully appropriate for this talk on spiritual warfare and the protection of life, this, this poem by him. Uh, and he actually uh, worked for several years in this very church, um, but he died oh, um, over, over 20 years ago now. The, the poem is called Soldier of Christ, and it, it tells us the whole disposition we need to belong to the army of the church, the army of Christ Jesus, and to uh, do the work of God as a soldier, uh, a soldier of God's love and truth and holiness, um, because there's no doubt that that is uh, part of our work, as well as being part of our way to heaven. Stand up, you children of the light, whom God's holy power defends. Be armed for that spiritual fight which Christ's second coming ends. Walk in the strength of God, and he will never fail you. For a sword, accept his word when your enemies assail you. The light of knowledge in your heart will make you innocently wise. Satan's camouflaging art will be uncovered to your eyes. Know God's mighty power surrounds you, always, everywhere. The powers of hell will not confound you if you trust that God is there. Be vigilant every day and keep your heart from straying off the road. The flesh tempts you to fall asleep. The world withdraws your heart from God. Accept your suffering, not complaining, nor thinking you have suffered loss. Your suffering means that Christ is reigning and your standard is the cross. Not once, but many times, you die as yourself is crucified. Often the pruning knife will try your patience and cut away your pride. Not once, but many times, the devil will tempt you to take the world's way avoiding the cross as something evil, compromising with a lie. Stand firm in the gospel's way and live by Christ's own spirit. Listen to all he has to say about the kingdom we inherit. It is a kingdom born within of love and truth and peace, incorruptible by sin, not of time or space. Defend this kingdom with your life. Extend its power on earth and pray that others may believe and know a second birth. If you take faith for your shield and God's word for your sword, no power on earth will make you yield or move you from your Lord. Pray continually in your heart where the Holy Spirit dwells and know that he will do his part, working in you 
what God wills. The Spirit who anointed you when you gave your heart to Christ shows you belong to God. He has appointed you and stands invisibly in your midst. The Spirit is the Christ within, and he will teach you everything. He strengthens you with power over sin and removes death's mortal sting. Be filled with him, and he will be like a river in your soul, refreshing you along the pilgrim way, your companion pointing to the goal. Lift your mind and heart above where the Son of God is seated. Hold to the sharp plough of his love until your furrow is completed. Avoid man, men's vain, contentious strife. Through the dust they cannot see. Love the truth more than your life, and the truth will keep you free. Thank you.